Now if I was to change this shape obviously to something more extreme like that. You see? So it makes a big difference having these these are exponential envelopes. So it's very important that, that you have these when you're programming drum tombs and any any drum machine worth its salt will have them. It's not a bad thing. What we need to do though is we need to get rid of some of the attack because what we're doing is basically we're going to use this as the base wave, the, the, the back end of the kick. So what we need to do is just remove some of that attack off it. Um, get that better there. Now what we're going to do now is uh, we, we've created basically the base end of our kick there. We'll, we'll modify that a little as, as we move along. But what we'll do is we want to move on to, to, to the body of our kick. Um, for this, basically looking after creating the thud, the part that you, you're going to feel in your chest and that basically the part that can blow out candles from 50 paces away so um as i mentioned the chest pounding energy produced by a kick is is due to the the, the frequency dominance or, or frequency gain which is basically anywhere between 100 to, to 300 um a fundamental laid along that path will, will determine the overall timbre of the kick so this is where we need to be decisive or, or experiment now in our previous kick, uh, I tuned it to E1, so that means I could tune this second kick to any note within a key that has E in it. Um, for instance, uh, C major also has E in it. I'll go for an easy one. C major has uh, E in it, so I could tune this kick to C, D, E, F, G, A, or B. And, and basically, it would remain harmonically in tune with, with the low-end bass that we've just programmed. Uh, now, we have to do this. It's, it's absolutely imperative that, that our layered kick that we're building like here is no, we'll, do, we'll, we'll take the decay to uh, quite short. Um, let's make two and a half. About there. So we're going to sound more like that now. Now, this one, we're going to send. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make this quite long. Now, you're probably wondering why we're going to do that now that's because the third kick we're going to put in we're going to give it an immediate attack and what we're doing is we're making sure that none of the envelopes uh, none of the transients none of the hits happen at the in same time in the previous time. session we looked at the use of um, ambiguous displacement within uh, loops that aren't particularly fast or complex and and while i said you can use it on faster faster genres a better approach when you're working around 128 to 135 which is, is typical of these genres is uh, is the use of metrical dissonance now as with the initial modulation movement the subliminal movement that, that we discussed in the third session and and the ambiguous displacement that we discussed in the previous session metrical dissonance is, is another essential technique that, that you've got to have in your repertoire because it really can breathe life into rhythms and it's used an awful lot in, in progressive genres, um, tech house and minimal and techno as well. So what is metrical dissonance? Well, on a very fundamental level, it's based around the idea that, that we as human beings like to work and calculate everything in even numbers. Let me explain what I mean by that. Now the reason I've done that is because I like to duck all the percussion on every kick. It just it just punches a little hole in the percussion, so anything that's happening at the same time of the kick just kind of ducks out of the way and lets the kick really pull through the mix. Now you're probably wondering why I haven't sent the snares to the bus too, but that's simply because, as we've mentioned before, the snares augment beats two and four. Now and remember how we stress the importance of evens two and four. Are important in in the drums now the thing is if we duck the snare what would happen is beats two and four the snare would duck and we'd lose our emphasis on them beats and the loop would would fall apart literally in front of our eyes so what we do is once we've done that we just ducked it just to punch a few holes in the compre in, in the percussion sorry just to make it sound that little bit better and what we're going to do now is i'm going to send the kick and the snare out to the next bus which is bus two there what I'm going to do, I'm going to call this loop. Okay. And I'm going to set them on. No output there. And send them fully to that bus. 
And what I'm also going to do is I'm also going to send that percussion to that bus as well. Turn it fully out and send that out both. So now what we've got is the